Oh hello, didn't see you there. Are you like me and you found yourself drowning in a bunch of unused yet beautiful notebooks that you just don't know what to do with? Then this is the video for you. See, I am a bit of a, um, what you could call notebook fanatic. I have always loved notebooks, but the problem is I am absolutely shit at filling them. Just nope, can't do it. And I know a lot of people feel like me that when the notebook is so pretty, it's just so beautiful, you feel this pressure to fill it with equally beautiful things. And that leads to uh, hoarding, is what I would call it. Notebook hoarding. I have so many notebooks that I have had to seal them away in these boxes so that I can't look at them until I've filled all the notebooks that I have out. So the plan is that I will fill all the notebooks I have, open a box, and be like, whoa, oh my god, look at these cute notebooks! And then I'll fill them and then I'll open the next box and I'll be like, whoa! So without buying new notebooks, it'll be like I get new ones! Because I have a shit memory and I've already forgotten what's in the boxes. Smart. Anyway, I thought I would share my tips with you on how I am now desperately trying to fill my notebooks without just writing, I am a sad human being who buys too many notebooks doesn't know how to fill them, please send help over and over again because that's just not productive. So anyway, here we go. A bunch of useless tips for you to fill your notebooks. Let's go. Tip number one, make to-do lists. Everyone needs to-do lists. The satisfaction of physically crossing off the things you've done, nothing in this world beats that. Having physical to-do lists is great. Tip number two, just make general lists, just lists of things. Things you love, things you hate, food you want to eat, food you never want to eat again. Just lists. Tip number three, write down your favorite quotes or just funny quotes or really stupid quotes or genius quotes. If you're watching your favorite TV show and that villain character does something really really cool and dramatic, write it down so that you can remember it for your epic villain moment. Tip number four, write down outfits or draw outfits so that on a day when you feel like I have no idea what to wear, you just flip through the book and see I can wear that so you don't have to make the actual effort of trying on things and seeing mm, does this really work? No, it doesn't. And then you have to start all over again. Having an outfit book has saved me a lot of time on the days where I don't have any imagination. Tip number five. Make collages. Make mood boards. Make a little shrine in paper form for your favorite actor. Print out a lot of pictures of your dog, your cat, your guinea pig, your fish, and just make a beautiful, beautiful picture. Tip number Six, journal. I feel like there's some kind of stigma against the whole diary thing, that that's a thing you do when you're a kid or when you're an angsty creator. But honestly, having a journal and just jotting down your thoughts every now and again can be really, really good for your sanity. Because looking at your words on paper gives you a lot of perspective. For example, if I'm having a mental breakdown and I write down what I'm feeling, and then the day after I look back on what I wrote and I realize, damn, I, I really had a full out mental breakdown over a skittle. Like, wow, I really didn't have to feel that bad. And then I can go on with my life feeling a lot better. It's great. Who needs therapy when you can just journal? Nah. Tip number seven, draw. Drawing is also a thing that is so much fun. And if you feel like, no, I'm shitty at drawing, I don't wanna do that. Everyone's shitty at drawing at some point. It's not like Picasso was born like a fucking genius. Okay, maybe he was born as a genius, but he couldn't paint like a genius from the day he was born. There we have it, there we have it. Words of wisdom, okay, yeah. And also, if you keep drawing and you fill an entire book, you'll be able to look through it and see how you got better. Is there anything more satisfying than seeing how you got better at something? I don't think so. Tip number eight, write down recipes. 
If you eat something at your friend's place and you're like, damn, this is so good, give me the recipe. And then you like get a message and you never look at that again. Make sure to write it down because writing things down helps you remember things easier. So I'm not saying you'll remember the recipe, like the ingredients, but you'll hopefully remember that you wrote it down. Keep the book in your kitchen and then when you feel like you don't know what to cook, just flip through it and you'll have your own little recipe book of things that you know you like or that you know that you want to try out. Tip number nine. I really like handwritten letters, but because I am dyslectic and generally a mess, I don't like to write the actual letter on the paper I want to send it on the first time I write it. Does that make sense? So I kind of make a first draft in a separate book that I collect all of my letters in so that I can write and I can see that, okay, maybe, maybe that wasn't very good. Maybe I should formulate that in another way. Or maybe I should put this part in another paragraph so that when I write the actual letter, I have something to reference. Tip number 10, write down your favorite memories. I know that you can just like take pictures and you can film things but there's something special about rereading a memory in your own words just exactly what you felt in that moment like add pictures add stickers so you might think that wait isn't this just journaling the thing is in a journal you'll have sad days happy days angry days frustrating days and days where you had no absolute clue what the hell you were feeling. In a happy memories book, you'll only have happy, soft, cozy, safe memories to relive. Tip number 11, write down your dreams. I can't really do this because I only remember a dream like maybe like five times per year it feels like but i know a lot of people enjoy writing down their dreams if you don't believe in like dreams symbolizing real things and shit you can at least get a good laugh from going back and reading what crazy shit you dreamt like three years ago tip number 12 write reviews this is one of my favorite pastimes reviews there's something so special in bringing out that inner critic in you and justifying it by writing a detailed review of what you just ate at McDonald's. So I'm sure there are a thousand other ways to fill your notebooks, but those were the 12 that I could think of. However, I do have one last tip for you, and that is it really doesn't matter. <laughs> You don't have to dedicate your notebooks to one specific thing and then abandon them when that thing isn't important to you anymore. You can fill a notebook with 50% journaling and 20% collages and then just meaningless scribbles the rest of it. I know continuity is something that you might want in your notebook, I know I often do, but honestly, is there anything more beautiful than a loved, used, a battered notebook that's just filled entirely with you like all aspects of you it doesn't matter what you fill your notebook with it matters that you fill it with things that you want to write i guess the essence of what i'm trying to say is don't be a notebook snob like i have been and still kind of am don't buy any more fucking notebooks until you fill the ones you already have okay yeah? Yeah? Okay, good. Okay, I'm gonna go clean up the mess that I made with all my notebooks now. <laughs> See you next time. Bye! Being accidentally erased. It can't happen.